Hi everyone, welcome to my first build guide for Remnant 2. Today we're looking at some of my favourite builds so far, hot swap builds with a ranged specialist, hunter and gunslinger, which we've been affectionately calling hugs. And what I love about swap builds is they're not really about stacking damage buff after damage buff. Instead they're all built around one very simple principle. Burst DPS is higher than sustained DPS. So what do we mean by that? So burst DPS is the damage per second you're getting while you're dumping your mag into something, whereas sustained DPS is if you include your reload times as well. Your sustained DPS is always lower than your burst DPS, because your reload time is cutting into your shooting time and slowing down all your juicy damage. By and large, games are designed so that the sustained damage of, say, the highest damage weapon and the lowest damage weapon in the game aren't all that far apart, with stuff like accuracy, range and recoil making up the difference between them so you're not stuck firing a pea shooter while your friend gets the BFG. Burst DPS, however, can really fluctuate, with some weapons having very high burst damage, but being held back by either slow reloads or small magazines. You normally can't maintain that burst DPS for very long, which is what keeps its sustained DPS in check, but what Remnant does is give you a few powerful ways to keep that burst DPS going. So the first key to this build is Sidewinder, the dark horse of the Gunslinger skill set, this skill looks pretty basic at first, it doesn't buff damage or fire rate, only swapping movement speed, and it only lasts 12 seconds, but it does reload and swap, which is an absolute game changer for small magazine weapons. Because while reloads can take a good chunk of time, swaps are lightning fast, especially with Sidewinder's buff to swap speed. That means basically zero downtime, just non-stop damage. For our second, or I should say first archetype, we'll be taking Hunter. The reason we're going with Hunter as our prime is Dead to Rights, which allows us to extend the Hunter's skills by hitting weak spots. This is one of the most powerful prime perks in the game, as it effectively allows us to keep our powerful crit and damage buffs going for the majority or even entirety of some fights. Meanwhile, we don't really need the Gunslinger's auto reload on skill activation, but Sidewinder is going to be giving us free reloads anyway. For your Hunter skills, you have some room for choice here. I see Hunter's Mark as the general purpose tool, with lower bonuses but great utility when exploring the world as it highlights everything around you, whereas Focus and Shroud offer bigger bonuses but are more suited for bosses as they come with strings attached. Hunter's Focus offers the most sustained boost to your damage, and when doing tests at the range will usually give you the highest average numbers. The problem comes from its 1 second activation time, which really hurts you the busier the boss fight and the more you're having to break ADS to dodge. This might still work if you're tanking up or if you're in co-op, uh, where a friend can take the boss's aggro, but in solo you'll have a harder time keeping that up. So I generally prefer Hunter Shroud, which offers a bigger but shorter bonus that degrades over a few seconds. That's not a big issue for us given we're all about big burst damage and small windows. Especially with aggressive bosses that are making you dodge a lot, you'll find that you can exit Shroud, mag dump both your guns, dodge an attack while reloading, and then Hunter Shroud will be back up to start your rotation all over again. The only inefficiency is that if you get that rare big damage window for a Sidewinder, your 50% damage boost will run down before Sidewinder is over, but you will still benefit from the 15% crit chance bonus, and in most cases you'll be forced to dodge midway through Sidewinder anyway, resetting Shroud. Alright, so Sidewinder is amazing, but it only lasts 12 seconds by default, so what are you doing the rest of the time? Here's where the Remnant 1 Classic comes in, Provisionist Ring. This ring automatically reloads your stowed weapon at a rate of 2% of your max ammo per second, which means you can actually make it work faster by increasing your max ammo with trades like ammo reserves and rings like deep pocket ring. This basically lets us get two reloads for the price of one, we magged on both guns but only have to reload once. This is the absolute cornerstone of the build, and means with guns like coach and double barrel, we can turn our two guns into a single weapon with five or more hard hitting and fast shots and a single reload. Complementing Provisioner's Ring, we have a few trinkets that we can switch in and out of depending on the situation. In our next slot, Onyx Pendulum is tailor-made for swap builds and lets you stack range damage up to a very respectable 25%. Tusk Release Valve is an amazing new amulet that emits a damaging corrosive cloud in a 7 meter radius, while also applying corrosion for that 10% damage bonus. This thing does a surprising amount of stagger and damage, and hits through walls, allowing you to clear basic adds with just one or two swaps and offering some much needed AoE to the build. So if you have some way to apply bleed like blood draw, abrasive whetstone or piece of very nice buff to your crit and crit damage, though it's more useful for taking on elites and bosses in my opinion. 
Gunslinger's ring is tailor-made for sort builds, with 30% sort speed and reload speed, which are essential to our usual rotation. It's always good to get some crit on your build, so if against bosses I'd recommend Akari Warband, given how much dodging you'll have to do. Uh, whereas with mobs, I'd recommend Braided Thorns, which procs on kill. Against bosses with an easy to hit weak spot, Xenia's Malice is a good pick, ramping up to 30% weak spot damage. But where weak spots are harder to hit, then Stone of Expanse is a decent alternative, uh, buffing range damage at the expense of the other damage types, which we don't really care about. And if you're sure that there's no uh, weak spots to hit at all, then Burn of the Gambler is a very good pick as well. Using shotguns against distant bosses, Target each jewel is a great ring for both tightening up your spread and increasing your range. Uh, whereas point focus is uh, more useful for giving you an even type of spread without the range bonus, which might be useful for enemies with particularly small weak points. Be wary of going too tight on your spread though, as it can make things harder to hit as well. If you want more Sidewinder uptime, you can pick Stone of the Continuance or Black Pawn Ring. And meanwhile, Deep Pocket Ring is very good for boosting your max ammo and also increasing the rate at which Provisional Ring reloads your guns, which might let you squeeze in an extra shot or two. Given we're going to be mag dumping every few seconds, tightly wound coil is an excellent choice, giving you a shield for 10% of max health, and you can then combine this with energy diverter for some top tier damage with 10% crit and plus 15% all damage. You can also slip on generating ban for some health regen while the shield is active, which can be an absolute lifesaver as well. So these are the trinkets that I feel have the most synergy. But really, apart from Provisioner Ring, you're pretty free to try out different combinations and find what feels good to you. Turning to our weapon choices, remember we're looking for guns that have a high ceiling for burst damage, but are held back by a small magazine. My favourite pairing is the Coach Gun and Sword Off, which have the perfect combination in my opinion of speed, uh, hard hitting rounds and fast reloads. The Coach Gun now fires slugs and not buckshot and is surprisingly accurate and good at range, almost like a two-shot sniper rifle. Again, we're all about extending our burst DPS, so Bandit is a solid choice, with a good chance of getting at least one extra slug before reloading. And when you get some juicy RNG, you can fire off a ridiculous number of rounds before reloading. Double Barrel now only has two shots instead of three, but it has a much better reload since it reloads both in one animation. I like to slot Extender on it to take it back up to three shells that can run at one, and also to improve its reload. For mods, we're going to be relying heavily on the various elemental shots like Hot Shot, Corrosive Rounds, and Overflow. What's great about them in Remnant 2 is that they also reload on activation, giving you yet another way to skip a reload. Beware though, if a boss has elemental resist, that goes out the window, so your best options then are Brawl, or Defrag, or Blood Draw. There are other weapon pairs you can try though, like the Coach Gun and the Western Revolver. I really like the design of the Western. It's not a gun that's meant for precision firing, but it's built for speed. The high fire rate and speed loader means it's built for fanning as quickly as possible, and it can sub in for the sword off at longer ranges. You can also try the sniper rifle and hunting pistol, which is a pretty classic combination from uh, Remnant 1. Uh, it's still very strong, especially at long distances, but it doesn't quite offer as much burst damage as the coach and double barrel, and also struggles a bit against crowds because you only get two shots before a reload. I haven't really decided what mutators are best for this combo. Extender doesn't quite add an extra bullet, and Slayer only benefits half of your shots in the slotted weapon, though maybe something like Twisted Wounds would be a benefit. Spawlden and Sword Off is another unorthodox combo. Spawlden does huge damage but has a much wider spread, so spread reduction to range is a must. The rotation is also a little different with this one, you may have to fire off a few shots with the Spawlden until your Sword Off is ready. So Slayer might not be a bad pick for it, or Time Wave since Spawlden slows stuff anyway. Ricochet Rifle can sub in if you want more crowd control. The Bandit hijinks from Remnant 1 are back again, so you can proc the Bandit pretty consistently once a bunch of discs are in the air. Anyway, these are just some of the working combos that work well for me, uh, but if you find any others, then feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, the rest of the build is fairly straightforward. Uh, for traits, I've gone with Max Spirit and Expertise for maximum uptime of my mods and skills. Uh, I've gone with maxed handling as well uh, to help with all the shotguns I'm using, though if you're going the sniper route you might want to drop this. Um, max vigor because I'm playing on APOC and although I've put points into footwork, that's actually not so important because uh, with these weapons I'm really using, we're, we're tending to shoot and move pretty quickly, we're not staying in ADS for a very long time. So I'd put those points into say bark skin or fortify instead. 
Uh, and then I've got a little points in endurance and recovery because I need stamina to roll. For relics, uh, you've got pretty much free choice of whatever feels good to you. Uh, in terms of relic fragments, I'd go for stuff like range crit chance, uh, swap speed, stamina. Uh, nothing really essential for this build. Uh, for armors, there's nothing special either. Just go with uh, as much armor as you can get at the encumbrance that you're comfortable with. So I've gone with medium roll, but see what you're comfortable with and get as much protection as you can. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. If you had any questions or any feedback, if you found the format too long or prefer something shorter, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, next video will be on builds using the reworked dev loop, so if that'll interest you, make sure to subscribe. Thanks.